Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to this Monday morning with business coach Malloy. And what a day it is. Mumbai is having its most beautiful monsoon. Since uh, the past two days, the, uh, Mumbai is facing, Mumbai and parts of Maharashtra has been facing a lot of rain. And while we celebrate monsoon, let's not also forget that there are thousands and thousands of people who are suffering because of this monsoon in various parts of the country. So I wish and pray that no one suffers because of this monsoon. But here we are on a Monday morning with our episode 25 of our series, The Power of Five. So ladies and gentlemen, when you talk about monsoon, early morning, you think about chai, the tea, which, or a coffee, but predominantly tea, which you would want to have a hot cup of, a, of tea and sit by the window and look at the beautiful monsoon and wish there was another product in your hand which would make the chai, the tea, triply delightful to have. Some call it, some have it plain, some dip it in tea, while others pulverize five to six of them to make a hot chai smoothie. Starbucks, are you listening? You eat them at break time or at exam time or when you have a hangover. It doesn't man matter how and when you consume it, but this small packet of parleji Considering the number of Indians from the children to the, uh, to the adults who have consumed the biscuit, surely it would be say, safe to say that Palaji is not yet another brand that built India. It is the brand which built India. And the last time the company counted, 4,551 Palaji biscuits were consumed per second. Now step back and ask yourself this question. You complain as an entrepreneur that your product is too much of a commodity. There's too much of competition. And here is Parleji selling, the last count that I have, from obviously from secondary data, is 4,551 biscuits are consumed per second. They're the makers of the world's largest selling biscuit brand. A company that has been around since 1929 produces 400 million biscuits daily and sells millions of biscuits daily and sells more than 100 crore packets across sizes every month through its 5 million retail outlets. In fact, Parleji sells more than all the biscuit brands sold in China, which is the world's fourth largest biscuit maker in the world. Let's go back to the year 1939 when the first batch of Parleji is printed out of the hot ovens. Biscuits typically weren't an weren't a Indian snack. Rather, they were an ideal companion for a cup of Darjeeling, San, uh, Darjeeling tea. It's that philosophy that has driven the brand over the next seven decades. Nothing has changed in their packaging for as long as I remember. Maybe the material of the packaging has changed. Earlier it was a thick butter paper. Today it is plastic. And every Indian family must have had Parleji at least once. Looking at the packets today lying at the table at homes, it made me wonder the sheer size of this product. The brand and it's big and yet so understated. The same visual, the same connect, generation after generation. So what makes Parleji brand tick so that it has positioned itself on a health platform, a single pack of biscuits offered 450 calories? Ever wondered how it is even possible? Along with the many, many optimizations that Parleji has done, let's focus on five learnings that we can that we can learn from a product, a commoditized product like a biscuit that, that which goes by the name Parleji. Learning number one: in the year 1994, 
a price of a small packet was of Paleji was four rupees and remained the same till 2021 when it was hiked by a rupee. As of today, a small packet of Paleji is rupees five. Now, when I, when I say a small packet, what comes to your mind? A packet that fits nicely into your hand that holds a handful of biscuits. Majority of us would perceive it that way and Parley knew it only too well. So instead of hiking the prices, they slowly and steadily kept reducing the size of the portion every time while maintaining the perception of a small packet. So a product which started off as 100 gram came down to 92.5 to 88 and today it is a 55 gram packet. And the same strategy has been used by many companies after that, which includes potato chips, chocolate bars, toothpaste, etc. This technique is called the graceful degradation. When something not so desirable happens so steadily that consumers don't feel the consequences of it at all. It also happens in the digital world. Remember how we used to get tons of cashback with Google Pay scratch cards over the time, but they reduced it to lesser cashbacks. It's the same. It's that just some companies do a great job at it by, by remaining graceful while others not so much. And we recently discovered that there is a term in economics for it that is called as shrinkflation. Shrink shrink shrinkflation. And Parleji was indeed a genius in doing this. And hence today, Parleji is that quintessential Indian biscuit. Are you as a business owner, converting your business, converting your product through the graceful route of string flexion. Learning number two, the, the biscuits were cheap, so everybody could afford them. Taste was yummy from the kids to the old people and everyone enjoyed it. And what makes Parleji brand tick is that it has positioned on the health platform a single pack of biscuits with 450 calories. Its earlier punchline was Parleji Swad Bhare Shakti Bhare. Currently, Parleji uses two, uh, two punchlines, G for genius and Hindustan ki takat. In 1987, when many glucose biscuits were launched in the market, so let's stop, step back. Till 87, Parleji was not Parleji, it was called as Parle Glucose Biscuit. In the year 1987, when, Parle bis uh, when many glucose biscuits were launched in the market, every biscuit started using the word gluco in the, in the, in the name. And that led to cannibalization of the Parle Gluco product. People started forgetting the word, people started forgetting Parle Gluco as they found the Gluco word everywhere. And that's where Parle needed to change the way of playing the game and they changed the name from Parle G, Gluco to Parle G. As there were so many biscuits using the word name Gluco that people were unable to differentiate. In 2003, Parle G became the, the largest selling biscuit in the world. And this is what is called the consumer utility perception. Consumer utility perception refers to the way consumers perceive the value or satisfaction they derive from a product or service. It's a very, very subjective assessment on how well a product or a service fulfills their needs and desires. The factors could be price, quality, features, brand perception. Now think about how, where Parleji is consumed. Tea, coffee, milk? Except these things, hardly Parleji is consumed anywhere. Have you ever thought why people don't consume a hide and seek or a bourbon or an Oreo on a regular basis? Because the utility perception is different about their products. If you want to eat something sweet and snacky, then we eat them all. But we don't use them on a daily basis with tea or coffee. When you're having something with a tea or coffee, the, the national utility perception still remains that chai ke saath parle ji hi chalega. So parle ji has not positioned itself as a snacky biscuit. Parle ji has positioned itself as a biscuit 
which will give you a wholesome calorie along with your chai or coffee. Number three, you need to be capex intelligence when you're running a business of this scale. Parlet has a total of 10 factories located in places like Mumbai, Rajasthan, Karnataka. Interestingly, these factories are less than 60 kilometer distance from cities. So Parlet G's or Parlet's transportation cost is always less than its competitor. And it is available and hence it is available at every city at the same price. I was listening to a gentleman called Mr. Ram Charan, one of the global giants as far as leadership coaching is concerned. And his take was that business owners are fools if they are going to invest their money in building infrastructure. They should not be investing in building manufacturing capacities when the world is full of manufacturing capacities. Today, if you, if you look at most of the products that you consume, the manufacturers, the sellers, the brand owners actually don't make them. They do something called contract manufacturing. Mr. Ramchandran's stake was that if you have money, don't invest in manufacturing. Invest in sales, marketing, brand building. Build that brand so big that people don't care where the product is being made, though you are having all the criteria for quality and safety. Parley didn't set up their factories far away from cities. They went into contract manufacturing. Today, more than 125 contract manufacturers produce and supply Parley G to small cities. That is why you get Parley G at the same rate in cities as well as villages. But if Parley didn't take care of this thing, they would have become bankrupt by now because the high transportation charges and the, fit, and the fuel uh, charges are increasingly con, con, uh, consistently. So Parley formed a strong sourcing network that provides standardized raw materials to factories. This makes them capex intelligent. Look at your business. Are you capex intelligent? Are you investing too much time or too much of your money, too much of your valuable resources in building capex when the money could be utilized elsewhere by tweaking your business model? Number four, frugal buying. Profits are booked while buying. This is the basic fundamental of the big investors who are rich today because they invested in company stocks or ideas when the price was less. Profits are not booked while selling, but while buying anything. Similarly, Parley books its profit not while selling, but while buying raw materials. 65% share, with a 65% share of uh, in the biscuit market, Parley is known for its cost optimization strategy. The company believes that whatever they save on procurement of raw material is their net profit. Their buying intelligence has decreased the cost of production to a great extent as they procure the raw material directly from sources. The production and operation department is developed so that to such an extent that in an around 115 tons of output, only 1% of output is wasted. They have strong mechanisms, monitoring mechanisms on employees so as to monitor employee truancy. Also, the replacement of the wax packaging with simple plastic has helped them decrease the cost of the final product. The technique of just noticeable difference has helped them to cover their cost of production without disappointing the customers, as Indian customers are price and quality conscious. Learning number five, leading into what, what I just said of Mr. Ram Charan, that investing your money in brand building, they spent a huge amount of time and energy on improving their brand equity. Parleji is not a profit-making product, but a driver product. Despite getting low margins, they didn't stop selling Parleji. Parleji's brand equity is 10 times more of the other brands as it is used in every house. 
So understanding of the Indian consumer is extremely critical. Too many of our business owners are not out there in the field trying to understand the buyer buying behavior. We want to sell what we want to make. We should be selling what the customer wants to use and buy and consume. Parley's success can be attributed to its deep understanding of the Indian consumer. From the outset, the company recognized the importance of affordability and accessibility. Parley has masterfully woven nostalgia and emotion into their marketing campaigns. Remember the heartwarming jingle, Chota Bacha Hai Kya Parley Ji Khao. It connected with generations of mothers and children, creating a lasting bond with the brand. Campaigns like Celebrate Happy Parley Moments, Wa Parley Ji resonated with consumers to an, on an emotional level, solidifying Parley's position as a trusted and beloved brand. In today's digital age, Parley has effectively embraced the online platforms to connect with consumers. The company has a strong presence on social media, engaging with followers through interactive campaign and contests. Parley leverages on digital marketing to target specific demographics and ensuring that its message reaches the right audience. The irony is the customer goes to buy Parley G, but when he sees other products, he also buys this because the actual profit of Parley comes when hide and seek, Monaco, Crackjack are sold or purchased by the consumer. But very rarely, the rural consumer, the, the uh, finance constraint consumer would actually go out to buy a hide and seek. They would go to buy a Parley G. And that is where the profits are. Parley's marketing strategy is a testament to the power of understanding the consumer, building emotional connects and adapting to the changing market but they have stayed true to its core values of affordability, quality, and innovation. Parley has not only achieved remarkable success, but more importantly, they have mastered the art of H to H marketing and selling, which is your heart to heart. Parley today enjoys a dominant position with a market share of 40%. Parley's flagship brand Parley G is recognized as the world's largest selling biscuit brand. Parley products are present in 70 million households across India. Parley enjoys a strong emotional uh, connection with its consumers. Parley has successfully adapted its marketing strategies to cater to changing consumer preferences and brands. Step back, ladies and gentlemen, and think once. Parley is a promoter-led business. Yes, it has expanded. It is not a global MNC. It's a hint Indian homegrown promoter-led business. Selling products which are utterly, utterly commoditized. But by doing all these things that we've just spoken, they have captured not only the heart share, but the wallet share, and they've grown significantly. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being with us. I will come back to you with new learnings every week on to show, to change the needle of how we think. We think we are small. The reason we think small is because we feel we are small. The day you start thinking that we are not small, we can significantly grow ourselves it would require a huge mindset shift. And that mindset shift is the only thing that we can do. You are the owner of your mind. And the day your mind starts thinking big, in spite of all the challenges that you will face, you will truly become big. Parle, a homegrown brand, in the last 40, 50 years has proven to the world that a homegrown brand, a family driven brand, one single individual with a big vision can make a difference. So can all of us. Keep that in your mind as you plan for the rest of your no, fiscal 25, nine months to go, think about where you want to be as on 31st March 2025, 
think about when do you want to be on 31st March 2030. And the subconscious mind will show you a path. But for that, you have to start thinking big. The world is, uh, the success in this world is only for those people who think big. If you constantly focus on all the challenges that you have, the subconscious mind will bring in a fresh, a fresh set of challenges to you. If you think about overcoming those challenges and growing big, nothing can stop you. Till this next Monday, same place, same time. Have a fantastic uh, Monday morning, fantastic week, and keep praying for all those people who are struggling in India because of the monsoons and the environmental conditions. They are going through difficult times, and the only thing that we can do is pray for their safety. Thank you so much. See you soon.